Hey everybody, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. You'll have to excuse my voice today. I'm just getting over a stupid cold. And uh, that's why I haven't been putting out a ton of videos this last week, but I'm also working up to releasing a couple of huge videos in the future where I'm gonna be doing some full songs. So I've been practicing, I've been uh, getting all my chops going. Even though I wasn't feeling the best, I still love practicing. So expect those out in the next couple of weeks. A couple days ago, I heard about Joe Bonamassa quitting social media, and I looked into it a little bit, and it turns out some people were um, going back and forth with him in a comment section, and it got a little bit ugly, so he just decided to uh, quit everything. He just kind of rage quit social media, and it really made me ponder if that was the correct move, but I mean, only he knows what's best for him, I guess. But it also reminded me of way early on with my channel, when I started receiving a lot of negative comments, particularly on this one video. And uh, it really shocked me at first, and I did not know how to deal with it at the time. So back then we were not a big channel. We had about a thousand subscribers, and I remember wanting the channel to grow a little bit. So I decided to put out a series called You're Probably Playing So-and-So Riff Incorrectly or Wrong or whatever I said. And it was funny because the first song I chose to teach was Enter Sandman. And I thought, you know, a lot of people play that intro a little bit weird, so I'm going to show them how it's done. So I did the video. Uh, I taught the way I learned it out of the original Tab Book for the Black Album. So I had a lot of faith in Tab Books back then. So I thought, you know what, I'll just teach it the way it really is, and we'll see what happens. I was not ready for what was going to hit me the next day. Because usually I upload late at night, I go to bed, I wake up the next day, and then I go through the comments most of the time. I was not prepared for the negativity that was coming my way. It was so crazy, the very first comment that I read, this guy said, hey dumbass, you call your video, you're probably playing Enter Sandman wrong, and you're playing it wrong. I just thought, oh, that's weird, you know, maybe this guy's drunk or something, he seems a little bit aggressive, whatever, let's go to the next comment. And comment after comment was the same thing, maybe not to that degree, but a lot of people telling me that uh, I was playing it incorrectly, that I was way off, uh, somebody actually included a link to a video where they show James close up playing the beginning riff. So I clicked on the link and I watched it and I just had to admit defeat. I'm like, you know what, all these years I thought it was played a certain way, but James is playing it in this very interesting way. His hand position is in a way that I had never played it before. This might not seem like a huge deal to a lot of people. You know, how do you hold your finger position? Who cares if it's the same notes? But for someone like me who really is into details and how the original artists play things, it was really important to me, not to mention the title of my video kind of, you know, uh, came back to haunt me because I said, you're probably playing it incorrectly. And then it was me doing it. So there was no way around it. I was wrong. The video that I put out that, by the way, it got a lot of views overnight. That's why I was really excited at first, because like I said, we were kind of a small channel. So to get all of these views all of a sudden, I got excited until I read the comments. So I was kind of conflicted. I didn't know what to do. And I thought, you know what? I really only have four choices. One, I could just rage quit YouTube, kind of like Joe did, and, uh, you know, or quit social media like he did and just get out of the, the uh, public eye just because it's so embarrassing. How do you come back from that? My next choice was just to delete the video and hope that people just forget about it over time. I thought, you know, in the middle of the night, I could just push a few buttons and the video will be gone. And uh, hopefully the people that saw it will just move on to other things. The third option I thought was just to leave it up and play dumb. You know, just uh, let it do its thing. Uh, keep it up and just never really mention it again. Instead of taking it down, just leaving it up and living with it. But I knew deep down that it would be really hard for me to sleep at night. I just couldn't live with myself knowing that that information was knowingly floating out there and it was incorrect. And the fourth option that I had was to fess up to it. To put out some sort of retraction video, explain myself, show the correct way to do it, and then I could also delete the old video that's incorrect just so nobody accidentally learns it the wrong way. I thought that would be a way to go as well. But that wasn't as easy as it seems, even though a lot of people are like, that's the way you have to go. The reason it's not as easy as it seems is because when you admit that you were wrong, especially back then when uh, I only had about a thousand subscribers, I thought nobody was going to trust me to teach them anymore. Because if I can't even get the beginning of Enter Sandman correct, especially with a title like I put on that video, uh, why would anyone trust me to teach them anything else? Plus back then my ego was very, very fragile and it was just really hard to admit that you were so wrong about something that you used to be so sure of. So it's kind of funny how the first option, just kind of quitting everything, seemed like 
as good of an idea as doing a retraction video. It's funny how that was actually on the same level in my mind at the time. In the end, I realized that even if I, you know, have to eat crow, I have to feel embarrassed for a while, option four is the only way to really go. So I did the retraction video. I was about to hit send or publish. And for a split second, I was like, okay, this is my last chance to change my mind before I put this out there. Because I was expecting the worst. I thought, you know what, if I publish this video, go home, go to bed, get up the next day, I may have already lost all of my subscribers that I worked so hard to build up to, all thousand of them. I also wasn't looking forward to reading all of the comments for this new retraction video because I thought they were gonna be as bad as the original video was for me. But I felt like it was just like ripping off a Band-Aid. I had to do it quick. I hit send. I went home and I nervously went to bed with a pit in my stomach the whole night. I didn't sleep very well. So I wake up the next day, I grab my laptop, I go to the bookstore like I always do every day, and uh, I open it up, feeling really queasy inside. Looked at the view count, and I was really shocked to realize that I had three times as many views on the retraction video than I did for the original video that I got incorrect. That was surprising. Right away, just seeing that big number was kind of exciting but it came with a price because I also thought, uh-oh, a lot of these people are new to my channel and the first video they're gonna see of mine is me admitting that I made a huge mistake. But in all honesty, I was just happy to see that many views on a video back then. So I go to the first comment and I read it. I was expecting the worst, like I said, and I was really surprised because it said something like, this is a refreshing video to watch. It must be hard for somebody to admit their mistake and do it publicly. I have a new respect for this channel and I'm actually gonna sub now. And I thought, wow, that's not what I expected at all. And as I went down, just like how the first video, the comments kept getting worse and worse, this video, the comments kept getting better and better. And so many people were saying the same type of thing. They were saying, you know, wow, I'm not used to seeing somebody admit their mistakes, you know, on a video like this. Yes, there were some uh, negative comments sprinkled in, like, what a dumbass, what are you doing teaching on YouTube, you can't even play entertainment, all that kind of stuff. They, it was sprinkled in there, but overwhelmingly, it was a positive message coming back to me. Over the next couple of days, I noticed the view count kept going up and up and up. And strangely, this became my very first big video. You know, I call it viral because in my world, a million views is viral for me. You know, it wasn't a 10 million or 100 million views like some people uh, consider viral, but to me, a million was a huge deal. And that was over five years ago. We're up to about two and a half million views on this video now as well. So I really learned something from that whole experience that, you know, you do something wrong, come back and fix your mistake. It's better than just letting it fester, letting the wrong information be out there just because your ego doesn't wanna get hurt. So it's one of those things where you have to overcome that dark side of yourself sometimes. And uh, in this case, I had to fight it tooth and nail, but when I finally did, it paid off in a very strange way. And it really launched my channel in a weird way. It's like ever since then, everything's been snowballing. Other videos have taken off as well, but that was really the first time something really took off with that sort of velocity. It's so strange that it had to be a retraction video, but that's my whole life. You know, I learned the hard way usually on a lot of things. And uh, this was a hard, hard earned lesson, I guess you could say. One of the reasons why I wanted to make this video as well is because I know a lot of people that want to start their own YouTube channels, but a lot of people are afraid of rejection, afraid of getting those negative comments as well. And hopefully my story can uh, inspire you to keep going. You know, I was able to turn these negative, they're not really, they weren't really negative in the end. At the time I took them really hard, but if I think about it now, a lot of it was constructive criticism. And that's the thing is you're gonna get a big wave of comments when you start doing things, uh, if your videos get noticed. And all of a sudden, you know, you have to start to develop a thicker skin. You have to be able to discern whether it's a constructive criticism or if it's just a blatant post. You know, sometimes people just want to hurt your feelings and make you feel bad. And right away, I can detect that now. It took a while to develop my uh, radar for that. But now it's really easy to see. It's usually some kind of uh, anonymous account, and they'll just say something really cutting about my mom or something, or, or like in Joe's case, his hair or something. It's just something to really personally attack you. 
that's stuff I discount right away. But when it comes down to other criticisms, I always listen to them because sometimes people have a really good point and they're not afraid to tell you things that maybe people who really like your channel won't tell you because they don't want to hurt your feelings. So it's a tough balance to strike, but over the years, uh, you develop it. All right, hopefully my voice didn't distract too much from the overall message of this video. I really wanted to get this video out there and uh, help people who are a little bit gun shy about starting off their own channels or whatever they wanna do as far as following their dreams publicly, just because they're worried about the backlash, the negative feedback, the criticisms, all that kind of stuff. And I love showing that you could take something that seems negative and turn it into a positive, into something that can actually launch your channel into notoriety and uh, hopefully make it a big part of your career, your life, whatever. So, okay, everyone, thank you for watching and expect some awesome videos coming out in the next couple of weeks. So I'm real excited and uh, we'll see you then or we'll see you at a live stream. All right, take care.